In my first year of architecture school, I was introduced to the concept of working in scale. As a refresher from the how to read and draw a scale floor plan video back in however months ago, drawing to scale is drawing an accurate representation of something, usually in a shrunken version of itself. If you're studying architecture or engineering or a similar course, you're going to have to know how to read and draw in scale. In most cases, this means using a scale ruler. Scale rulers come in different shapes and sizes, but they all do the same thing. They let you read off a scaled drawing and they let you draw your own scale drawings, which is awesome. They come with different scales because you often need to represent things at different scales. For example, a cabinet doesn't need to be shrunken as much as a whole floor plan design would need to be to fit onto a page. The common scales you'll see on scale rulers are 1 to 1, 1 to 5, 1 to 10, 20, 50, 100, 200 and 500. Notice how these are all really easy numbers to remember. That's really important actually, not if you're just making a scale ruler, but because these are the scales you are going to use most often as an architect or engineer. You won't see any scale rulers or professional drawings from architects or engineers in random scales such as 1 to 7, 1 to 52, 1 to 300. And this is something I see quite a lot of students doing. Use random scales to make sure that their drawings fit on the page nicely, but it ends up causing a whole lot more headaches in the long run than it needs to. The reason why these are at the scales they are is because they are easily divisible. They can be divided quite easily. And so the best way to learn how we can use a scale ruler is by actually just using one. So let's have a look at how we do that with this scale ruler. I'm going to take a stab and say that you're probably in your first year and you've been given the task of drawing a scale drawing. Let's say your teacher has asked you to draw a floor plan at a scale of 1 to 100. Now this isn't just some arbitrary scale I picked out of the air. 1 to 100 is typically and conventionally used by architects and engineers to draw floor plans, sections and elevations. Okay, okay, so what does this actually mean? Your teacher wants you to draw a floor plan at a scale of 1 to 100. What it's telling us is that she wants or he wants us to draw a floor plan 100 times smaller than what the actual real life design would look like. So drawing a wall that's 300 millimeters thick in a 1 to 100 drawing would be 100 times smaller than that. 300 divided by 100 is 3. So the 300 millimeter wall would actually be drawn on paper as 3 millimeters in a 1 to 100 drawing. Let's say it's also got a length of 7 meters long. So it's 300 millimeters thick, but it's 7 meters in length. Do you have to divide every single measurement by 100 in order to draw at a scale of 1 to 100? No, that would suck. That's in fact why they've made these to get around that problem. If we navigate to our 1 to 100 scale, it will actually tell us what 7 meters would look like at 1 to 100, and you don't have to do any calculations in order to do so. So if you want to draw a 300 millimeter thick wall at 7 meters long, all you have to do is follow your scale ruler and then find where 300 millimeters is and 7 meters. Does that make sense? Maybe we should do another one for example's sake, because I think that one was a little bit too easy for you. Let's try it at a scale of 1 to 20. This is going to be a much bigger drawing, so typically this is going to be used to detail up intricate parts of your design. For example, you're not going to show your entire facade in a scale of 1 to 20 because it's going to be way too big, but you might actually just show a little part of how your wall connects to your floor slab in that detailed part of your facade, like a zoomed in part of your facade, if that makes sense. Being zoomed in so much, it allows you to see a lot more than what you would see at a scale of 1 to 100. And so the smaller the scale, the bigger you're actually representing something as. So let's draw this 300 millimeter thick by 7 meter long wall at a scale of 1 to 20. We could divide 300 by 20 on the calculator and then find out what that is and then draw that line, but why would we do that when we've got this bad boy? If we look at the scale ruler and find the scale of 1 to 20, we can just follow that bad boy along and it will tell us where 300 millimeters is and you can just draw along that. And you can also find where 7 meters is and it's actually longer than this ruler. So we're just going to go halfway across and then we're going to do a little bit more. And you can now see that this is a lot bigger drawing than the 1 to 100 drawing we did before. So that's how you use a scale ruler for architecture or engineering. If you want to check out one of my other videos, feel more than welcome to do so. And I'll catch you in the next one. Until then, be well.